Any guy who goes after a girl significantly younger than them is severely lacking in their life. What? And I, I mean that confidence-wise, I mean, like, they are falling short in so many places that that is the only place they can turn to to feel like they have they have something on the scale of power. And it's, I mean, ultimately it's predatory. I mean, there's just no way to kind of, because you're manipulating someone who just is not aware of what they're giving you. And it's unfair. Nigga, what? You have to keep in mind, the women that are speaking right now are adult film stars who have given themselves away to older men that were giving them money. They're just speaking from their experiences that they went through whenever they sold their soul. I believe that a man should always date a younger woman because a younger woman is always attracted to a older man because of his maturity, because of her hypergamy, for his ability to lead. Whenever you see women talking like this, they're trying to shame men to feel better about themselves. And that's what modern women do. They try to shame you to bully you into their belief system so they can have power and control over you. When the shaming tactics do not work, then they try to play the victim role. When the victim role do not work, that's typically when they are going to crash. But nowadays, women feel like they can reinvent themselves and they can come out a whole new woman and start talking differently than what they did before. It doesn't work like that when it comes to women. That's women's biggest downfall. They go out, they live their best life, they, they become the best version of themselves. But then they wake up one day and they say, you know what? The girl I used to be, I don't want to be her anymore. So from this day forward, I'm going to start acting like this. And I want results for me acting like that. But everybody else in the world, they can see through that. You ever seen a 30-year-old girl who's been for the streets in her 20s and then all of a sudden she's in her 30s and she's trying to talk like she got some common sense, but everybody's looking through her like, you look like you was fresh out of rehab. Now you're trying to sit here and sound like you some type of doctor. That's what women do. Their personality and their look when they get older never match what's coming out of their mouth. Women can talk to you for a few seconds and go, something wrong, it's odd. They're good at detecting things. So I don't think it's very much as much what you say as it is how you say it. And I know that's a bit cliche. But if you come across and you're genuinely confident and they can genuinely feel a vibe from you that's not creepy, you can say anything. I think you can go up to a girl and say, excuse me, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt to her friend. Be very polite and say, I just want to say you are absolutely beautiful. And if you say that in a way that's calm and nice and cool and you come across nice, I don't want to ruin your night or nothing, but I'm going to buy you both a drink and I'll leave you alone. They're going to be, oh, okay, cool. I think you don't have to say anything fancy, right? But if you come over and like, oh, and you get up, then you're a weirdo. So it's all about the delivery. He's right. This is why when it comes to women, you have to have some type of personality. You have to have something about you so you know your approach. You know exactly how your approach is going to be. A lot of guys, you're the thing that slows you down the most is your confidence within yourself. You know you're not the best man. You know you're not working on yourself. You know you're the, you don't have a purpose. So you have that gut feeling that it's not going to work before you even approach a woman because you think that there is another guy who is better than you. You have to realize when you guys go to the club, it's hard for you to walk up to a girl, especially if you didn't drive there or you don't have the best car that's outside because you know the competition is high. The best way for you to get better at approaching women is to feel like you're valuable. And the only way to feel like you're valuable is to actually get out and work for it. You have to get knocked down and get back up, knocked down, get back up, knocked down, and get back up in order for you to achieve that toughness within your heart. And I'm talking business-wise. Heartbreaks, trust me, you'll get over heartbreaks fast when you learn how to adjust to business. Without learning the toughness of business, you're never going to have that confidence in real life to walk up to a woman because you know you're shorthanded. You know you don't have money, you know you're not in shape, and you know you're not the best looking guy in the world. But you think, hey, what comes out of my mouth, maybe it works. I believe a lot of you guys set yourself up to get rejected just, just so you get it. <clears throat> I think a lot of you guys want to be rejected just so you can say you talk to her the same way you get in the comments and disagree just for attention 
I will tell you right now on this podcast, I have walked away from women I loved with all my heart and women I missed for months, but I never fucking told them and I never texted them because I was a man about it. Being a man about things isn't not feeling things. It's feeling things and still acting like a man. In fact, you know what's funny? One of them... <laughs> after two and a half years messaged me on Instagram yesterday and I read her message and left it on red and she was sitting there she was online waiting for me to reply and I was like no if she's not gonna be the woman you need her to be she has to fucking go you just have to be a man about it and not be a fucking and he's right and the reason why a lot of guys are not man enough to leave a woman is because you don't want to go through the process anymore of getting a woman because it's hard for a man to get a date guys do not go on date every week most guys don't, especially a lot of these guys online. You do not go on a date every week, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year. So when you finally get around to getting a girlfriend, you don't want to leave because you know she's going to be able to replace you the next day, but you don't know when you're going to be able to replace her. But what you have to understand is, is when you are that dude and you can attract multiple women, when you have a girlfriend, she'll just put up with it. That's what you have to understand. Women love having the guy that all the girls want. And trust me, you could become that guy, but you have to go through the storm. You have to work hard to become him. Why? So you're comfortable walking away from a relationship. When you walk away from a relationship and she wants you back, that's where the power is at. And when you have that power, you don't give it up. I would just act say if a guy was working a nine to five, married to a woman, had a couple of kids, going these two or three holidays a year yeah. and he said to you he was happy i'll say congratulations if you're happy with that absolutely congratulations and i don't look down on you that's that's perfectly fine but some men are just not born that way some men are born with something else inside of them with a fire inside of them which cannot be extinguished by beans on toast tv at night nine to five sitting around with your wife a couple blowjobs a month most <laughs> some men are not some men are not satisfied with that my time on the planet i guarantee will be more eventful i will die with more stories i would have made a bigger ripple in in space time because i refuse to comply with just the average this is okay you'll be happy with this take it there's always been that class of person even since the dawn of time there's been the, the, the normal guy and then there's been the dude who insists on conquering the world there's been napoleon who says no taking this and this and this and he's right. This is the mindset that men need to have. You have to have an ego that's willing to compete, but you can't be prideful. What do I mean? You have to be willing to compete with every man, but you can't get to the point where you feel like you can't learn anything from anyone. And that's what a lot of guys are facing. The nerds that have been online constantly collecting information all day long, it's hard for you to create a life outside the internet. It's because you gain so much knowledge that you think you know everything about life and all you've done is just scared yourself away from reality because you're afraid to face the hardship. In other words, everyone has the knowledge now. They're just weak with the knowledge because you haven't gained life experiences. You have to gain life experiences and in order to gain life experiences, you have have to want to conquer the world you have to have that ego to want to compete with another man if you if you do not have the spirit to compete you're never going to build that toughness and you're going to be an average person there's nothing wrong with being an average person but you got to want a woman who's okay with the average person there's too many average joes trying to get a woman who's always practicing hypergamy and you're getting mad whenever you lose when a black billionaire meets a white billionaire you think there's any do you think they care he's a billionaire i'm a billionaire both our yachts are in monaco he's from algeria he stole all the gold i'm a stock market whatever there's no the racism's for the poor people because if you keep the poor people divided they can't wake up long enough to do what i did and read about how money works because if they do that we're in big trouble right then the slaves will wake up you don't want to deprogram the slaves so you have to convince the slaves that it's not the monetary system's fault that you're broke. It's not the monetary system's fault that you continue to work for a set number of dollars and the price of houses just keep going up and up and up. It's not the monetary system's fault. It's the white man's fault or the black man's fault or the Asian people's fault. Someone else's fault. I think all this stuff, feminism, racism, all these things, I think they're all control mechanisms. They have to keep the poor people fighting amongst each other because if the poor people all unite, then it's much harder to control us. He's absolutely right. You have to think outside the box. There's no such thing as I'm woke, but I'm broke. No, 
Racism is only for broke people because it gives you something to channel your anger towards. If you get around someone who's still blaming another culture for why they're down, you have to get away from them because they are stuck inside of a time period that doesn't exist anymore. That's the worst thing that you can do is go through something and you never get over it for the rest of your life. That's what it's like when it comes to racism. You have people, black, white, Spanish, Latinos, everybody's racist, but they go back 60 years and talk about it. They go back 200 years and talk about it. They go back so far. So sometimes we didn't even have electricity for the times that they talk about. But the people that spend a lot of time talking about that, they go nowhere in life. Their brain is so little. Once you get out and start experiencing life and you go back around these people, it will agitate you to how far behind they are and you have to eliminate them. This is why a lot of people that gain success, they get away from their family. This is Anthony Spade. Hopefully you guys get the message behind the video. Comment, like, subscribe to both of my channels. Hasta la vista.